Hey, this is John Reed. I'm joined by Joe from Liquid Hub. How's it going? It's going good, John. We're here to talk about your financial force journey on the first day of the conference here. But we've got to, got to pull back a little bit and find out about what you guys have been up to because you guys have been in kind of an acquisition frenzy. Tell us a little bit about your business and what you're up to. We have, John. We, we started back in early 2001 as a uh, IT architecture focused firm. Yeah. And over the past five years, we've uh, kind of been transforming ourselves into this uh, next generation digital agency type organization, delivering services all the way from a uh, UI UX digital experience front end to a, uh, a run type organization. So think, build, operate. Right. In the, uh, and, and we like to think that it's a kind of a focused on an, an empathetic version of engaging with your customer, whatever that customer may be. So part of that is helping ad agencies to better understand how to serve digital customers it, as well. It is. Right? It yeah. is. We, um, we believe we have the technical capabilities in the background to be able to take what an agent agency you know, comes up with from a design and thought process mm -hmm. and implement that in a digital world. And part of your acquisitions are explained by that too because you're trying to acquire the talent to provide that full experience. Correct. We've acquired uh, two, I'll call them digital ad agencies in the recent past, okay. over the past couple of years. One being Foundry 9 out of New York. The most recent over the past uh, three weeks was a company called EVO out of San Francisco. And that just brings our full capability of front-end to back-end delivery. Not a bad way to hire New York and San Francisco talent. It gives us it? a really good footprint. Gives There's you a little no bit doubt. of an edge there. Mm -hmm. Now bring us to the financial force piece. You guys are longtime Salesforce customers as, as well. We are. We, we're, I think, right around 10 years in the Salesforce platform. And so we had implemented that and running that to really manage the flow of business in, track our opportunities, drive towards our customers, that whole close rate ratio type stuff. And then uh, in April of last year, we decided to cut all of our one-off uh, tools that we used to run the business over to the Financial Force platform. That has been a, uh, an exercise that's been going pretty quickly in relationship to the acquisitions we've been making along the way as well. So the challenge is in getting ourselves porting our things over from our core systems like Open Air into Financial Force, and then doing that while bringing new people, new companies over that have different ways of thinking than we do. Not always easy to talk to your new acquisition and say, here's your new software you're gonna be using. I guess you're probably getting a little better at that now. Y you do, you do. Our largest acquisition was about 1,800 people, I think, uh, between 1,200 and 1,800. Um, and it's, it's still a challenge every time we do it. So you're running on uh, the professional services automation with Financial Force and also the HCM? HCM, PSA, and we're, we're right in the throes, as you and I talk, of doing the revenue management component. Okay. And that is, uh, you know, uh, the way I like to think about it, it's connecting the dots. There, we, we went with Financial Force because, because of the footprint we had with Salesforce and integrating that th all the way through to the end. And the one piece that has been a little challenge for us is on the, the, the we use Great Plains as our financial package today. Mm -hmm and getting our accounting and finance department to be able to look at what comes out of financial force, what they would normally produce in Great Plains, get them comfortable and get them moving, it's probably gonna take us a little while to get through. But in the process, you'll have better risk management around revenue recognition. That's a big piece of this, right? It is, and, and in that vein, we moved revenue recognition and management from our finance department over to our delivery organization. And I'm the product owner for that component as well as PSA, but we did that just to reduce risk. It's, it's way easier for us in the day-to-day -day throes of delivery to be able to recognize when a project isn't going quite like we thought it might, where we need to hold back a little bit of revenue, not recognize it, because we don't know if, if we're going to have a customer that's going to want to pay that in the end, right? And it's easier to hold it than it is to recognize it and then have to pull it back. Before we wrap up, there's one thing I wanted to cover, which is You've now been live on Financial Force for about a year. Are you starting to be able to specifically speak to results you've seen from that? Absolutely. The, one of the, the best analogies I can make, and it relates to the, the finance team and their comfort with the new system, is we started building reports and dashboards fairly early in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and 
through that, we, we came up with some dashboards that allow our, one, our delivery leaders to run the organization, but also our executives to be able to see what's going on with the business, not only from a today, but what's forecasted. So we push out three dashboards every week to our executive team that give them utilization and expenses and mm-hmm. kind of forecasting the way our business is running. And our, our CFO has said to me multiple times that he lives in that dashboard on a weekly basis. Mm. It's his truth, right? His source of truth or record of it's truth. It's the kind of feedback that helps with the old job security, right? That's nice. It does. It does. That's nice. Well, listen, good luck with the next phase and thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it.